So there is an important spiritual concept that um, I want to discuss in short uh, because it's really one of the most important concepts to know um, and one cannot really understand um, Judaism, the world, without it. Um, although there are, there are a few who argues with that uh, concept that we're going to discuss, um, it is still in Kabbalah, at least according to almost everyone, they agree, and then even according to the ones who are not Kabbalists. Um, I'm speaking about the concept of Gilgulim, the concept of reincarnations. Um, we, it would be very hard anyway to understand the state of the world or why, um, you know, people are, um, who are evil are having a good time and the people who are righteous suffer um, or why you will be born with a specific quality or a specific weakness. What made you be the way you are? Were you born already defective or with these qualities, right? So the idea is that um, everything has a root. Every one of our soul comes from uh, a root, a root original soul. Um, we know already that we all are from Adam Rishon, from the first man, all of humanity. Therefore, we are all reincarnation, we are all parts of his soul. So the same way that according to our DNA, right, from the blood, we can uh, retrace our ancestry, it's the same thing. Why is it so? Because it's the same way on the spiritual level. Everything we can uh, experience or understand on the physical level scientific level is here to give us a glimpse of how it works on the spiritual level. So therefore, we are all reincarnations. We are all here. We all have been here before. And today, we, we, there are hundreds of thousands of stories, of testimonies of people who have been here before and they remember the previous life, usually when people are very young. Uh, not usually. Like, there, there are there's a lot of cases, thousands of cases, but uh, it's still a minority uh, people, but they, it's usually when they are kids, when they're young, they still remember the past life, but they don't pay attention. They don't know it's connected to their past life. They just think it's something. That, so if they don't pay attention and look for uh, the connection from the past or the history, then they, then they won't know. But um, they can remember their past life. Some people. That's why some kids, they are three years old, four years old, they start playing piano like Mozart or stuff like that. Um, and that's um, because of their soul before. So we, the problems we have in our lives, 90% of them comes from the past. Why we have certain uh, struggle with money or struggle with marriage or struggle with a certain um, evil inclination, temptations, um, where we're missing certain things or we're tested in a certain area. All that... 90% comes from the past. This is also the, the test that we put on ourselves in, this, in our lifetime, but most of it comes from uh, um, our past mission, what we accomplished, what we felt, and uh, we're given each time an opportunity to, to finish. The goal is not to come back. We all have one mission. Until we finish that mission, we have to come back. Um, it hurts the soul to come back because... It's better for the soul to stay in heaven once it's accomplished its mission. Uh, but um, we, each time we die, these two options, or we finish our mission, so we go to Gehinom, which means we go to the purification process that people call hell. That's for 11 months maximum on a spiritual level, whatever that means. But this is a, it's a limited time, and then we go to a storage in heaven. If one didn't finish his mission, he has to come back in this world in a new body. And um, actually it was the Zohar in last week's parasha that speaks about that. Um, and the, the soul has the choice to elevate the body that is given in this lifetime. If the soul is able to connect to the body and be someone and do an action that changes the world, meaning brings life to that body, uh, that body will reincarnate at the end of time with all the bodies that in, in which the soul came because each one was a significant role player. Uh, in, in, in a way, it's as if to say that um, I'm going to 
we clone ourselves on the spiritual level. Each time is a different part of our soul that comes back that needs to complete itself. And um, and basically, you're going to have all your parts of yourself. Uh, that's going to be like a family of yourself. Um, each one, the part, uh, you'll, you'll meet the parts of yourself that has fixed and done something in the world. Uh, because they're all connected. This is like uh, the father, and the, I mean, the great-great-grandfather, the great-grandfather, the grandfather, the father and the son uh, are all you uh, in a way. Um, and you, are, you have worked together uh, to fix, to fix uh, something, to do a mission. So that, 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 that's the, the importance of um, inheritance and the importance of there were so many laws what is passed down and the sins of the great the parents how far you can go all the merit of the parents the the schusavos that we call the merit of the fathers all this plays a, gr a, a big uh, role in our spiritual growth in our lifetime because we need to fix ourselves um, and uh, we so we need to be aware of that. We need to be aware of that. And we need to be aware that anybody you meet, especially the people that you have an actual real connection to, not just hello, goodbye, but people that are going to be part of your life are usually from a previous reincarnation. They can be your family. It can be, um, if I remember correctly, another part of yourself. Even in this lifetime, you can have another part of yourself and that's why you love that other part. Uh, or it can be uh, someone that uh, gave you something now you need to give back or someone you need to forgive or, so, or someone that you need to ask for forgiveness um, because you did something in the past. So we have to be very aware of all the interaction, whether it's a boss, whether it's a family member, whether it's a, it's a good friend. All those people are people that come from the past. When you live like that, everything changes. Your whole world is... Um, has to do with who you are, who, who you have become, what's your mission here, are you aware of the people around you and what you can give, what it is the fixing I, I'm supposed to do in that relationship, what is the interaction. Um, and um, you look at your weaknesses and your faults uh, in, this, in, in this lifetime and you try to fix them, see, okay, this indication, the reason I struggle in this area is an indication that I need to fix that area what can I do to fix it? Um, and um, and then hopefully, by being aware, right now we're almost at the end of time, so this we're all towards the end. Um, so or we're like very great so or, or we get, um, you know, all the crap that we still need to fix. So we need to, um, we need to hurry. There's not so much time left. But that's the basic idea of a reincarnation, uh, Gilgulim. And uh, there's a lot of books of it. The Sefer Gigulin, the book of reincarnations. Uh, it's a great book in the Zohar. It speaks a lot of reincarnations and many. Uh, there's so many stories in the Torah, in the Tanakh itself. You can see again and again um, hints of reincarnation everywhere. Um, we, we know that uh, the ten martyrs uh, of Rabbi Akiva and the ten martyrs were in reincarnation of the ten uh, sons of Yaakov who um, you know sold Yosef um, and that uh, the that the well, I can't remember now that this is the hundreds of, of example we know that the Adam uh, that David was in creation from Adam and that's why and Moshe also that's why Adam is Adam died for David and Mem for Moshe, and that um, um, that's why it says that Adam gave seventy years to David, of seventy years of his life. That's why David lived seventy years, and um, we know that um, David was in creation reincarnation of Esav. That's why he was a red hair. They used to call him Esav, and that's why. Uh, Esav was Edom, the red, everything is connected to each other. Um, when you start looking in the stories and who has the same type of life or the same punishment or something that needs to be fixed from that punishment, you're going to see a pattern 
in almost every individual in the Bible. Uh, and it's fascinating. It helps you understand why why is that person punished like that? What did he do? He didn't do anything. Well, not because that punishment or that, again, God doesn't punish for punishing, but that rectification has to do with an action of the past and therefore he needs to be rectified based on that. Then you understand what the sin is and or the mistake is and you understand uh, who was it that did it before. And based on that, you can find out who, what was the root of his soul. Um, but again, our souls are like tree, trees with trunks, branches, and fruits and leaves. And um, we are all connected. We're all one big family, Jews and non-Jews, uh, each one with his own mission and his own forefathers, foremothers. And, um, but we need to search um, um, for one's mission and, this, and, and, and try to identify the things we need to fix. Um, but try to learn the Torah, always trying to figure out who uh, learned the Bible, trying to figure out um, who came from whom, uh, what was the reincarnation. This soul corresponds to a uh, soul that comes to fix. And they, once you look in the books of Kabbalah, you'll find out um, all the connection. It's uh, fascinating because you start understanding everything, why is this person who did that and not someone else. So I uh, let you enjoy the discovery of reincarnations and, um, and you will see how the Torah, the, Torah, the Bible makes a comp it's completely different. It's a different story because you understand why everything happened the way it is. Okay, um, enjoy that uh, amazing discovery. <laughs> 